Well, good morning. I know it's a little chilly outside, but warm in here, so I'm, I hope you're glad to be here this morning as we praise and worship the Lord together. You could be anywhere else today, but I believe God's brought each and every one of us here with purpose, with reason to hear from Him, to leave different changed because we've been in His presence. If you're a first time or returning guest, a couple ways that uh, you can connect with us, we would love for you to do that. You can text WELCOME to 575-347-1123. Also in front of you, you'll find a connection card. You can fill that out, drop on the offering plate a little bit later in the service or in one of the boxes at each of the exits. We would greatly appreciate that. Um, just a couple of announcements. Uh, again, three ways uh, to worship here. Um, in person, 8 15, 1045. Online, 1045. And I'm not sure if we're on. Are we on? Is what? And welcome to the 815 service. We're also broadcasting online starting today. So, all right. Yeah. All right. Amen. So let folks know so they can they can check either one out live, and it's also going to be on there. If they're not able to get on live, they can uh, check it out later as well. On the air, KTK Radio 92.1, 9 a.m. on Sundays. That's a week uh, from the previous sermons, uh, week's sermon. Uh, several ways to give, of course, in person as well as online. You can mail that in, uh, text uh, uh, to give as well. So thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, Sunday night discipleship classes started back. Back last week, uh, Revelation Bible Study, Kids Club, Worship uh, Choir Rehearsals as well, Student uh, have been going as well as uh, CR Step Study. Now tonight I'll just give you a little sneak preview. Uh, if you've not been in Revelation Bible Study, we're going to kind of talk about the rapture tonight. So come on out. If you're not able to make it in person, we can Zoom you in as well. We've got several folks that uh, um, participate through Zoom. Men, don't forget this coming Saturday, 8 o'clock, our monthly men's prayer breakfast in the Fellowship Hall. You'll not want to miss that great opportunity for not just eating together, but encouraging one another. Uh, great devotion and just uh, to be able to be spiritually uh, fed and nourished. So encourage and invite a friend. Come on out uh, this Saturday. FBC Prime Timers, uh, Lunch, and that's our senior adult ministry. We'll start back meeting on March 17th. That is actually St. Patrick's Day, so wear your green. And uh, we're going to be meeting 1130 uh, in the Fellowship Hall. All of the uh, food and drinks will be provided, so you invite a friend and come on out on March 17th. Uh, today is officially the last day for deacon nominations. If you've not already gotten those in, uh, you can grab one of the deacon nomination forms at each of the exits. Uh, you can drop that in the boxes. You can put that in the offering plate. If you're not able to get it in today. If you could get that in uh, by tomorrow in the church office, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, several opportunities for service, including um, audio-visual team. And so as we are beginning to broadcast um, uh, through Facebook, our 815 service, we need some additional help. So if you would like to plug in to the audiovisual ministry at 815 or 1045. Uh, obviously, you're coming to this 815 service, so that'd be great to plug in. Please see Pastor Kevin. He'll uh, let you know uh, some opportunities for service through our audiovisual ministry as we try to continue to reach out uh, to a wider audience here in Carlsbad and ultimately around the world. But uh, we're glad that you're here this morning. Those of you in person, those watching online, thank you for being a part of worship this morning. Would you join me as we ask God's blessing? upon our time uh, together. Father God, we do thank you uh, for the freedom that we enjoy in this country uh, to be able to walk through these doors this morning, to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth, uh, to be able to worship you uh, in relative peace and quiet, un unlike uh, believers in the Ukraine today and other places around the world that simply do not enjoy uh, the freedoms that we have here in the United States. Father, might we never take those freedoms for granted, knowing ultimately uh, that they are gifts from you. And so, Father, help us to use those gifts wisely and help us to uh, enter into a time of worship this morning. Father, as we uh, come into worship, we ask that you would help us to set aside anything that might distract us uh, from uh, keeping our minds, attention, our hearts, affection directed to you. In and through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we invite your Spirit to come, be among us this morning, Father, to move in a mighty way that hearts and minds would be open and receptive to your word through the songs, through the prayers, through the times of encouragement, uh, through the spoken message. And Father, to truly leave here different change because we have been in your presence. Might all that we say and do truly honor and glorify you. And we ask all this in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen.
thank you that death is defeated, that you are alive, that we can worship you here. I pray that this would be a time that we can just focus on you, that we would lean into whatever you're calling us to, and that we would worship with all our heart. Please be seated. 
God certainly has been good to us. He has been faithful. Um, and with that in mind, as we enter into a time of uh, taking up our, our offering and tithe, I would invite our ushers to, to please come forward. Um, and I, I would like to put several prayer requests before you. Um, so although we're thankful for the many restrictions that have been lifted, we still have several uh, church family members that are struggling with COVID and, and other illnesses. Um, Johanna Miller is having surgery on Thursday, um, one of our youth students that we love dearly, so please be lifting her up in prayer and preparation for that. Um, Marilyn Moore, who had uh, gallbladder surgery on Thursday, um, she, she's doing well, um, recovering well, and she should be coming home this week uh, from the hospital, uh, which we're thankful for. Um, Jim Sisk is also recovering from hip surgery, and the family of Jay Smith, uh, Kay Sisk's brother, um, passed away this week. Um, so please be praying for the, the Smith family and the, the family of Forrest Dickerson as well, um, who he also um, went home to be with the Lord Friday night. And, of course, we want to lift up always our, our nation, um, our leaders, leaders around the world, um, but especially our, the situation that's going on in Ukraine, um, our, our missionaries, our brothers and sisters in Christ who are literally ministering and living through a war. Um, so we're praying for the church there. Um, the footage out of Ukraine is, is heartbreaking, um, but you can see brothers and sisters in Christ worshiping and singing and singing hymns um, and praying together. Um, and so we have a God who can protect them and keep them safe and a God who can um, sow peace and turn things around. And so we'll continue to, to pray for that because we have a God who can. Uh, and then Pastor John Burke, who ministered here in Carlsbad, um, also passed away. So be praying for the, the Burke family. Um, let's pray. Father God, thank you for the salvation that we have in the name of Jesus. That we have peace with you. That our sins have been wiped away forevermore. And God, that we have a future one in service to you and living for, for you to magnify your glory and the honor that you're due. So do that through us. God, we lift up our, our brothers and sisters in Christ in Ukraine and we ask that the, the truth of John 16, would just be sewn down deep into their hearts. They'd be able to cling on to that truth. that though we face many trials and tribulations, they can have hope and joy because you've already overcome the world. God, we pray for a change of hearts in, in Russian leadership, that you would bring this to an end, and that you would preserve those bystanders, the civilians, and keep them safe. Lord, for the, those who have lost loved ones this week and recently, similarly, we ask that they would just have a, a sense of the hope of the gospel, the hope that they have in you, that we'll see our loved ones again. God, give us peace and joy in, in the meantime. Joy even in our sorrow. God, take this offering and, and this tithe and use it for your glory. Use it for your work, work in and through our church in Carlsbad, that we would um, continue to see lives change through CR, that we would see students um, come to know you and, and live for you, that we would give our, our senior members um, just joy and community and fellowship. God, all the things that you do through this church, that you would bless bless our church and the ministries, that you would use these ties to do great things. We love you and pray the name of Jesus. Amen.
Aren't you so glad that God is so good to us? God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. If you have your copy of God's Word, I invite you to go ahead and be turning to the New Testament book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 2. So we're looking at the verses 5 through 11, as well as other scripture this morning. Very familiar passage of scripture uh, to many of you. I, I couldn't help but, as I was singing that song, to think 
that probably somewhere in the Ukraine, brothers and sisters in Christ are singing uh, that same song. God is so, even in the midst of war, even in the midst of trials and tribulations, God is good all uh, the time. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I have uh, sort of been uh, off and on transfixed by the events that have been taking place this last week. And the question that came to mind, how should uh, I think about, how should we think about the war in Ukraine? Uh, well, as I was thinking about that question, it sort of dawned on me it might depend upon what news sources we're looking at. You see, you go back all the way to Vietnam. I, I was alive during that time. Some of you were uh, older and kind of under it. You had about three major news outlets on television. NBC, ABC, and then the, sort of the granddaddy of them all, CBS, with Walter Cronkite, who uh, really began to, to turn the tide by his newscast every night. Fast forward from Vietnam to the first Gulf War. I was in law school, I think 1990, 91, I can't remember exactly when. Uh, and all of a sudden, it was a, a live war uh, through CNN. CNN had folks all over the, the ground there. And so we saw not just taped images, but we were actually in real time seeing war happen on the ground. Fast forward to uh, the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, and you, you have more news outlets, including Fox News, which came about in 1996. Now fast forward to the Ukrainian war and what's happened over this past week, and now we're seeing the war streamed in live time on social media. From the president of the Ukraine uh, sending out an Instagram, that, that's how we're kind of gathering our news not just from the, the three legacy broadcast networks, but really uh, from people on the ground in Ukraine that are sending us images of what's taking place through social media. And that's indeed how many people today, including uh, millennials and Gen Z, are getting their news. They're not getting the news by watching television. They're, they're getting the news through digital sources. They're getting the news by going on here and pulling, I asked, asked my son, uh, 16 years old, uh, Friday night, he, he's not necessarily a big connoisseur of news. Most 16-year-olds, most teenagers aren't glued to the television, aren't fi transfixed. I said, where do you get your news? Reddit. How many of you have never even heard of Reddit? Reddit. Uh, social media. That's, that's right. So how we think about, not just the war in Ukraine, but how we think about events of the day might depend on the news sources that we are watching and listening to and going to even online on our phones, our tablets, our computers. But one of the things that has struck me about uh, the Ukrainian people is their sacrifices to remain a free people in a free land. Of course, here in the United States, we must never take our freedoms for granted. We must always understand that freedom is a gift from Almighty God, but we see so many times the sacrifices throughout our history and the sacrifices that we're seeing play out in real time even this past week of people who yearn to be free because freedom ultimately is not a gift from any government. Freedom is a gift from Almighty God. And so no government, be it Russia or even our own government here in the United States, no government can ever take away what God has rightfully given to us because freedom is his gift to people not just here in the United States but those who are made in his image all around the world. And last week as we began a new sermon series I will, nine traits of the outwardly focused Christian. Uh, we looked at, at the character trait of Christians that is sometimes at odds with our culture and sometimes even within the church, and that is unity. Uh, this morning we, uh, we look at a, a second foundational character trait, which is sacrifice. Sacrifice. 
Last week we asked the question, how can I be a unifying church member? How can we keep unity within the church? This morning we we asked the question, how can I be a sacrificing, how can I be a sacrificial church member? To answer that question, we look to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, and some other passages of Scripture. But if you're able to stand this morning, if you have your copy of God's Word as we read uh, together, Philippians chapter 2, I alluded to this passage last week. We'll kind of look at it in depth this morning. Reading from the Christian Standard Bible, Paul writes, Adopt the same attitude, or or have the same mind, some translations translate it. Adopt the same attitude or mind as that of Christ Jesus. And, And what is that mind? What is that attitude? He kind of lays it out here in these next verses. Who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited or, or grasp or cling to. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. And for this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. The Father, we thank you this morning, Father, for your word. We thank you for Jesus and for his humble sacrifice uh, to leave his home in heaven, to come to be born as a baby in Bethlehem, to grow and ultimately to go to the cross of Calvary and there die on the cross for our sins and the sins of the world. Father, I pray this morning that through your spirit and through the word that you would help us to understand what it means uh, to be a sacrificial church member, to follow the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the example that he gave to us 2,000 years ago. Uh, Father, I pray this morning that as we hear the word, that we would understand the word and that we would put your word into practice in our day-to-day life, both within the church and and as we scatter out throughout the community so that we uh, will be the sacrificial church members, the sacrificial members of the body of Christ that you have called us to be. Father, speak now, help us to hear, and help us to honor and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Folks, the question this morning, how can you and I be sacrificial church members? It really comes down to this, what Paul says here in verse 5, and we'll kind of explore that here in depth. Adopt the same attitude, adopt the same mindset as that of Christ Jesus. What does it mean for you and for me uh, to be sacrificial church members by adopting that same attitude or that same mindset? Four things. First of all, think like Jesus. Think like Jesus. Jesus gave us his mind. We have the mind of Christ. We not only have the spirit of Christ, we talked about that last week, that it's going to be virtually impossible for us to be a unifying church member if we do not have the spirit of God living inside of us because our default then would only be to operate in the flesh. Sometimes we walk in the flesh even though we have the spirit, but if we don't have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of us, we simply cannot be a unifying church member. The same goes uh, with being a sacrificial church member it means that we have the spirit of god living inside of us and it means that we not only have the mind of christ but they we are operating we have adopted the attitude and the mind of jesus christ jesus gave us not just the holy spirit but jesus has given us his mind we have the mind of christ first corinthians chapter 2 verses 10 through 16 paul puts it this way now god has revealed these things to us by the spirit since the spirit searches everything even the depths of god for who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit within him in the same way no one knows the thoughts of god except the spirit of god now we have not received the spirit of the world but the spirit who comes from god so that we may understand what has been freely given to us by god We also speak these things, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. But the person without the Spirit does not receive what comes from God's Spirit because it is foolishness to him. He is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. The spiritual person, however, can evaluate everything, and yet he himself cannot be evaluated by anyone. 
For who has known the Lord's mind that he may instruct him? And here it is, but we have the mind of Christ. When we have a new spirit, we also should have a renewed new mind. Sacrifice not only begins with the spirit of Christ, but sacrifice begins with the mind of Christ. This might even be translated this way. How Jesus, how Jesus thought about things is the way that you and I should think about things. Let me repeat that. How Jesus thought about things is the way that you and I should think about these things. Sacrificial church members think like Jesus about people, about events, and about circumstances in our lives. What does that mean? It means simply this. We give up our own thoughts, and yes, we give up even the thoughts of popular culture. We give up the thoughts, perhaps, of our favorite pundit on television. We give up the thoughts of our favorite politician, and we adopt the thoughts of Jesus. We make a conscious decision to think like Jesus about every aspect of our life. How do we know how Jesus thinks? Right here. It's not a mystery. We, we have his word. God has given us his word. From Genesis to Revelation, it is God's thoughts. It's God's words. It's how God thinks. And so we, it's not a mystery as to how Jesus thinks about things in the world. It's not a mystery about how Jesus thinks about events or circumstances, or relationships, or people within the world. We're to think about Jesus, whether that's the war in Ukraine, or wars, or rumors of wars that are taking place in conflict throughout the world. We think like Jesus. When it comes to marriage and family, there, there are a lot of resources out there. There are a lot of people that will give you advice as to marriage and family and raising children. Uh, you, you might remember Dr. Spock, not, not Mr. Spock, but Dr. Spock, way back when. He, he had some ideas that people... Got. Folks, God has given us his thoughts on marriage and on family. And quite frankly, what God's thoughts that he has given to us in Scripture, they're sufficient. See, God's word is not only an error, without, without error. It is not only God-breathed, not only inspired, but God's Word is sufficient. What does it mean that God's Word is sufficient? It means that this is all we need. Folks, we do not need anything outside of God's Word. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't look to other sources as long as they don't conflict with God's Word. That's not what I'm saying. But folks, ultimately, at the end of the day, when it comes to thinking about any of these issues, events in the world, marriage and family, finances, Dave Ramsey has some good advice about finances. Other people have some good advice about finances, but, but at the end of the day, you probably don't need to pay Dave Ramsey to figure out what... It, God's got a lot of words about what it means to have good finances, what it ha means to have a good marriage, what it means to have a good family, what it means to have good relationships at work, what it means to be a good boss, what it means to be a good employee, what it means to be a good church member, what it means for us as a church when we deal with those who maybe have backslidden and are prodigals, what it means to, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the lost and unbelievers in our community. Folks, we think like Jesus. He's not left it a mystery. He's given us his thoughts. This morning, are you thinking like Jesus about issues, events, people, situations that you find yourself in, or do you, you find yourself just kind of coming up with your, your own thoughts and trying to figure out, folks, God, God wants us to think like his son because we have his mind. We've been given the mind of Christ. We've been given the spirit of Christ, and we're to think like Jesus. But if we're to, to be sacrificial church members, not only to think like Jesus, we're to, to let go like Jesus. Let go like Jesus. Notice in verse 6, Jesus was existing in the, the form of God. John chapter 1 reveals to us that, that Jesus is God himself. 
the second person of the Trinity. He did not become a God. He has always been. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ has always been God, part of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But yet Jesus, who existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Other translations say grasp or clinged on to. Uh, what does it mean here? It means simply to be sacrificial like Jesus. We're to let go like Jesus. Jesus did not want to exploit his position as God. He did not want to use it to his own advantage, but he wanted to use it ultimately to glorify his heavenly Father. That's why you will notice in the, the Gospels that there are so many times where Jesus, he submits to the will of his Father. Why? Because he did not want to use his own position as a means to exploit others. Jesus did not want to use force to retain his position. Uh, the New American Standard and the Lula translates it something to be grasped. New Living Translation says something to be cling to. In, in other words, do you know so many people today in our culture that will do anything to cling to power? We're seeing that play itself out, are we not, on the world stage? Of really simply, I don't know if he's a madman or what, simply trying to, to cling to power and to expand that power base. Jesus is the opposite of that. He's the one who came and, and he took the form of a man and took the form of a servant and, and gave up his prerogatives, gave up his privileges so that he ultimately might go to the cross of Calvary and there die for your sins and for my sins and the sins of the world. Sacrificial church members let go like Jesus, by not using force to cling to positions or to power. Now, how do we do that sometimes? It's the force of position within the church, and we're to simply let that go, whether that's as a pastor, whether that's as a deacon. God, God has called us to be part of the body of Christ, and he's called each of us to have responsibilities. But as leaders, may we never use our positions or our power to exploit others. We have seen that far too often in churches throughout the Southern Baptist Convention, not to mention other churches and other denominations where people in positions of power have exploited the weak, particularly in sexual abuse situations. Might we never exploit our power or position? But sometimes we might say, well, I'm not going to use my position, but sometimes we cling to positions of power through money the force of money contributed to the church well pastor if you don't do x y and z if the church doesn't do x y and z and i'm so thankful as i said last week that that that's not the case here in this church we are unified that's not the case in this church that people are doing that but so many churches uh, around the world pastor if you don't do it my way then i just might not give you any money folks by the way if you withhold your tithe, man, you're not robbing from me. You're not robbing from this church. You, you are robbing from somebody, and he'll take care of it, but that's, that's a sermon for another day. But don't, don't, don't allow that. And sometimes it's the force of longevity within the church. Preacher, do you, do you know how long I've been a member of this church? Now, that could come across two ways. Sort of like if you're from the South. Bless your heart. <laughs> or bless your heart. Depends on the inflection. No, I, I don't know how long you've been a member of this church. Would you tell me? Share with it. Never let position or power be used as a, a weapon of force to, to exploit or to cling to. Jesus, he, he gave it all up. He did not cling to, let go like Jesus. Are you, are you letting go like, like Jesus? So when we let go like Jesus, then, then this next one will be much easier to serve like Jesus. Jesus sacrificed when he emptied himself. Now, he did not empty himself of his divine nature or of his divinity. But Jesus, when he was born, was 100% God and 100% man. Now, if you ask me to explain that, I simply cannot explain it other than by faith. Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. Uh, he never gave up his divinity. He never gave up uh, being God. But he did empty himself of his kingly privileges. 
He did empty himself by taking on the form of a servant. And Jesus gives us perhaps the greatest example of what it means to sacrifice. Can you imagine today very many kings or presidents or rulers of the world that would get down to such a level and stoop down and wash someone's smelly, stinky feet? That's what Jesus did. To give us an example of what it means to, to be a lowly servant. Not many in the world today would emulate that kind of servant, yet Jesus gives us the, the premier example of what it means to, to serve and what it means to sacrifice. Did he need to do that? No, but yet he willingly took on the form of a servant. Sacrificial church members will serve like Jesus, when we empty ourselves of our privileges and take on the heart of a servant. In the church, there is simply no job that we should be too good to do, whether that's as a pastor or as a deacon or as a Sunday school teacher or as a church leader, and whether it's moving chairs or setting up tables or picking up trash or whatever it might be, there's simply no job within the church that we should say that uh, that's beneath. I, I, I can't do that. Now, now I'm... Some of you might be like, well, does that mean that he's going to call me up to preach? No, not necessarily. But folks, we, we should all be willing to, to chip in. We should all be willing to, uh, to serve. We should all, we, all, all be willing to, to sacrifice in service. The sacrificial church member doesn't say, uh, I could never do that. I... I, I, I when asked to, to do a job, when asked to, to serve, your first response should simply be, I, can I pray about it? Can I pray about it? Can I pray about it earnestly? Pray, pray about it sincerely? Can I pray about it? Because whoever's asking you, hopefully they prayed about it. And God has impressed upon them to ask you to help with a certain position. And maybe you've never done that before. Maybe you've never worked in that area before, but someone asked you, let me pray about that. Now, now by the way, now I know nobody in here does this. Don't just, use, well, let, let me pray about that, and you've already in your mind gone, I'm not doing that. Not happening. Work with youth? Uh-uh. Work, work with those senior adults? Uh-uh. No, I ain't doing that. Sincerely. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll pray. I don't have to have done that. God equips the called. He doesn't call the equipped. That, that's not original to me, but when he's calling, I, yeah, let me pray about it. And, and a sacrificial church member should never utter these words. Preacher, we've never... Okay, I'll let you utter them right now, but that's it. No more, okay? Well, we... We've never done celebrate recovery here. Are now? We can't do. God's a big God. Never say never to God. Never be. We, oh, that'll never work. I don't. You'd be amazed at what God can do. You'd be amazed at how God will surprise you. Are you you're just sacrificially serving? And by the way, if you're here, if this is this is your church home. Find at least one place to serve, one place to plug in. Doesn't mean you have to do five different things, but find one place to serve and, and start serving. If, if we had every church member that, that considers First Baptist Church, Carl's Baptist their Church, everybody that just did one thing, we would have a long list of ministries that we could start. Just do one thing. Don't do five. Just, just step up and do one. Are you sacrificially serving? And when we are, then we're doing what Jesus did. We're obeying like Jesus. To sacrifice is to obey. Jesus obeyed even though it cost him his life. He humbled himself what, by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. His obedience paid the price for our sin. His obedience is the only thing that paid the price for our sin. See, folks, it's only because of his shed blood on the cross of Calvary. It's only because of his broken body that, that we can have salvation. And, folks, there is salvation in no one else but in Jesus Christ. And so this morning, if you've never repented, 
and believe the gospel, then today God is calling you to, to repent and to believe the gospel, and that Jesus did what he said he would do, and he is the Savior of the world. Sacrificial church members obey, folks, even when it costs us something. And our obedience will cost, especially in our culture. We may not see it like others around the world. Man, today, in China, in North Korea, in Cuba, in Russia, in the Ukraine, brothers and sisters in Christ, their faith is costing them something. It's costing them their freedom, and for many, it's costing them their very lives. We may not be called to lay down our lives, but folks, we are called to obedience, and obedience will cost. This morning is your obedience costing you anything? Is it costing you anything to be a Christian? Is it costing you anything to be a biblical and joyous church member of First Baptist Church of Carlsbad, New Mexico? If not, if it's not costing you anything, you might just step back and go, why not? See, being a follower of Christ is taking up our cross daily and following him. It will cost. It might cost in prestige. It might cost in power. It might cost in friendships. It might cost in money. It might cost in positions. It might cost in jobs. It might cost in numerous ways. But following Jesus will cost something. Being a member of the church and if this is your church home, being a member of First Baptist Church of Carlsbad, New Mexico, should cost more than being a member of the local Rotary Club or the Kiwanis Club or the Lions Club. It should cost more. Why? Because of the price that was paid for the membership that we enjoy here at First Baptist, the price that was paid by Jesus Christ himself. But Jesus not only sacrificed, but he was exalted because of his sacrificial service. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of the glory of God the Father. He gave up his very life in sacrificial service for us, for his bride, the church. What more can we do but to sacrifice and to be a sacrificing church member and when we adopt an attitude of sacrificial service god's word jesus himself says we will be exalted matthew chapter 23 i'm sure the the disciples were wrangling over who the greatest was and and who would serve whom and jesus says the greatest among you what will be your servant that, that's that's not what the world says is it that, that's, not what the world, that's not even what the first century church would be about. That's not even what the disciples wanted. The greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. This morning, God is calling us not just to unity, but God is calling us to sacrifice Sacrifice for him and for his honor and for his glory. Sacrifice for those who are yet here, those who have yet to come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord, to, to be a sacrificial church member. The question that I leave this morning is simply this, and, and only you and God can answer this. Same was last week. Am I? Am I currently, right now? Not, not what I was yesterday or five years ago or ten years ago. Not what I'll be tomorrow because we don't have tomorrow. But am I today? Am I a sacrificial church member? Have I adopted the mind and the attitude of Christ? Is Christ's mind permeating everything that I do and say and believe? This morning, might we be a sacrificial church member? as we follow Jesus' sacrifice, and as we continue to point people to him. Let's pray. Father God, thank you this morning for Jesus' sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you for his example of leaving his home in heaven to be born as a baby, taking on the form and likeness of a man and the servanthood that he exemplified, the obedience all the way to 
death, even death on a cross. Father, I pray that you would help us this morning as we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit and that we have also been given the mind of Christ. Father, I pray that you would help us to uh, see every situation, every circumstance, every trial and tribulation, everything that we go through. Help us to see it through the mind and attitude of Jesus. Father, I pray this morning for anyone here who has never received Jesus as Savior and Lord, never repented and believed the gospel, don't have the Holy Spirit of God, don't have the mind of Christ, today is the day that their life would be completely changed and transformed, that your Spirit would so open their heart and mind to draw them to the cross, to the empty tomb, that they might know Jesus, that they might leave here with the Spirit of God and the mind of Christ. Father, I pray for Christians this morning. Maybe their thoughts have not necessarily been the thoughts of Jesus. Whether it's on events happening in our world and our country today, maybe it's things happening in their own life, in their marriage, at work, with their children, with their finances, with their health. Father, I pray that you'd help us today as we leave here to, to have the mind and the attitude of Christ. And today would be the day we decide that we're going to have Christ's mind today, his attitude today, that it would permeate everything about us. Uh, Father, I pray this morning for those who need to be a part of this church, to be a unified and sacrificial member of First Baptist Church of Carlsbad, New Mexico. For those who need to step up and to say, I, I'm ready to serve. I, I don't know what it is, I don't know where, but I, I'm ready and I'm willing some to be baptized never follow jesus and believers baptism but today is the day i, I want to be baptized i want to take that very first first step of obedience in the christian life for others maybe to say i, I surrender the call to ministry and to missions I, I don't know where god wants me to to be i don't know what he wants me to do but i i know that god's calling me to to be a missionary i know god's calling me to be a, a minister a pastor I, I know god's calling me to preach what, whatever it is as God's speaking this morning, you come to the altar and come to God. Respond to Him in obedience and faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Our, our altars are open. I'll be here at the front, Pastor Michael at the back. As God's Spirit moves, as we sing this song, might, might you do business with the Lord, and as He speaks, might you respond to Him. Come to the altar this morning.
Amen. Our treasure is in Christ. Might we cherish that. May we never take it for granted. Curtis Ginger, you come. Uh, Curtis and Ginger have been uh, worshiping with us uh, for a while now. Uh, part of our Celebrate Recovery on Wednesday nights. I got to, to meet this couple probably about a year or so ago as we began talking uh, about starting a Celebrate Recovery here on Wednesday nights, and so they have been an integral part of that. And uh, just over the last year, as Curtis has shared with me, just the love that we have shown, uh, not only to their family, but to celebrate recovery and just the welcoming spirit that we have had. Uh, the Lord uh, just wants to lead them here to be a part of this church family and to be a, a member, a, a, a sacrificial and a unifying church member to, to be here, a part of what God is doing. And so and they're coming on statement of faith, having trusted Jesus Christ, as Savior and Lord, been baptized by believers' baptism by immersion. If you rejoice in them coming this morning and joining our church family, let it be known by saying amen. 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 Thank you. That's uh, where my ministry's at, uh, the Hope Center. Okay, and it ministers through the hope. That's where we actually met, the Hope Center, and as we gathered around the table and see what God was going to do, little did we, well, we should have known what God was going to do in and through when we're faithful, we'll step out in faith and say, yep, we're going to do it, and we did. And so it's, it's been a blessing, and so they've been a blessing here. And so I know you want to come by and just let them know you'll be praying for them, excited uh, for them, and so uh, thank you so much. And so you stick around right here. Uh, we'll get ready. Uh, Bible study Sunday school in just a, about eight minutes. So if you don't know what class you need to be in, please let us know. We'll be happy to, to direct you. But uh, as we dismiss this morning, I'm going to ask one of our deacons of the week, Lloyd Boatman, to come and close us out in a word of prayer. Hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget tonight, 5.30, come back again for our discipleship classes. God bless you.